Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk, exploring the issues affecting all of our lives. I'm your host, Austin Harris, and welcome back to this, our second episode, as we recap the 2022 Commonwealth Games, which were held in Birmingham, England, where Cayman competed in six individual sports, three of which we have the pleasure of recapping here on Let's Talk. It is a pleasure to welcome to today's episode uh, the swimming coach for Team Cayman, Mr. Darren Mew. Darren, thank you so very much for being our guest. Oh, my pleasure to be here. Uh, we, it's a bit of a tradition here on uh, Let's Talk that we first get to know our guests individually. Uh, so perhaps you can maybe tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and your background specific, uh, obviously, to Team Cayman. So um, I'm actually an island boy. I grew up on a small island off the south coast of England, the Isle of Wight. And that's how I ended up here. I was doing the Ireland Games 11 years ago and got, meant, got told there was a job in the Cayman Islands and I was sold. So um, I grew up on a small island. Um, I love island life. I love Cayman. Um, my history, I, I was actually a swimmer as well. Um, I swam to Olympics, three Commonwealth Games, um, picked up a couple of silvers, a couple of bronze at Commonwealth Games. So it's, Commonwealth Games has always been really special to me. So to go back as a coach was incredible. Indeed. And um, to go back as a coach, looking after these five swimmers, it was, it was awesome. Indeed. Now, obviously, an athlete <laughs> first competing in at least two Olympics, you said? Two Olympics, yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. And then on to coaching. What made you decide uh, to perhaps pick up uh, the armor, if you will, yeah. of coach uh, and continuing your, your swimming career? Um, it's funny because when I was swimming, I, was, I didn't want to be a coach when I retired. Yeah. And then I retired, I did a year of consulting, a little bit of coaching. And you just realize there's so much knowledge I picked up. I, had, I was so lucky I swam with the top coaches in the world. And, and then you start passing that knowledge on and you see the kids soak it up and you get the excitement from them. And it, it's, it's hard to let go. Um, and that, I, I just love it. I love walking on poolside that five o'clock in the morning and the kids are there ready to learn, ready to work hard. And when you've got that much energy floating around you, it's, it's really effective. So it's, I love it. Indeed. Um, now, if we were to describe the uh, swimmers uh, of Team Cayman that competed in the 2022 Commonwealth Games, uh, in a word, we would use the word young. Uh, hence the reason why we don't have the pleasure of any of the athletes with us uh, at the time of our interview. They are in school, in <laughs> yeah. fact. Uh, but certainly talk to us a little bit about the importance and the relationship between athletics and academics so that our listening audience can gain a further appreciation uh, for the challenges, but also the commitment yeah. uh, that your young swimmers uh, continue to make on a daily basis. Um, great question, because I mean, just yesterday or the day before, I was talking to a few of my swimmers, they've all had their exam results back recently. Mm -hmm. And um, they all got great grades at school. Um, and I think there's a big connection between the discipline they put into training, into transferring that into their studying and the schoolwork. Um, and I know a lot of universities see sport on your CV and they, they see it as a positive thing and it teaches good time management. And you've got these athletes training so many hours a week and then still going studying revising and getting great grades it, it's it's really a credit to the athletes themselves so um there's a huge correlation between the two and it, it's, it's really great to hear hear them come back saying they've got school awards and they've got great grades so that's excellent that's excellent so there were five <laughs> swimmers uh, on team came out that competed in the uh, Birmingham, England, uh, 2022 Commonwealth Games. Uh, I believe four of them had uh, really standout performances. We had uh, Sierra Broadbelt uh, and James Allison. Uh, we saw 16-year-old uh, Harper Barrowman uh, being the, I think it was, the first Cayman Islands female swimmer uh, to compete in a finals event. Uh, walk us through uh, these standout performances from your young yeah. athletes, from a coaching perspective, obviously to uh, to see your athletes perform perhaps at their personal best yeah. at a uh, Commonwealth Games has to be a moment of pride. Walk us through uh, those performances, if you can. I mean, 
at their age, walking out in front of, I think it was five or 6,000 people. I mean, not just, the p people weren't turning up just for the finals, they're turning up for their prelims as well. And it was an incredible atmosphere. And it, something like that's pretty easy to get overwhelmed by, but um, the, all the athletes, all the swimmers did great. Um, like you said, we, we had a lot of personal bests, a lot of swimmers on their best times. And to be able to go to a competition of that magnitude and compete, at your best is, is just a credit to how they handled the pressure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like you said, all we had five swimmers there and all of them swam really, really well. So, you know, super proud of all of them. Sure. You mentioned handling the pressure. Um, one of your competitors, Sierra Broadbelt, uh, is I think the youngest member of the uh, swim team for yeah. Team Cayman, 13 years old. Uh, she um, had what can only be described as a stellar performance in her uh, second heat in the women's 50 meter, 50 meter freestyle, which she took first place in. Um, nice. And of course, we watched this, uh, this, 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 watched her compete. And what struck me um, was the level of composure that this young lady demonstrated getting in the pool her, her quality of focus coming out of the pool before such a massive crowd what was that like as a coach and certainly uh you know if sierra were here you know what would she say about oh, that experience i mean the, the smile on her face at the end of the race i think i think told you everything on how she was feeling um i've, I've been lucky enough to coach sierra for a number of years now and she's an east end girl um and we, we, we trained pretty early in the mornings and she would get up early in the morning, drive, drive from East End to the Lions Pool in town. Um, and the level of commitment and dedication has been, been awesome. So to see her get up and race that hard and do so well, it, it, it's well deserved. Um, and I think I'm right in saying she was actually the youngest swimmer at the whole competition. Wow. Um, so, you know, really lucky that we got sent some of the commentary. And I mean, the commentators were just as just as excited about her racing as we were. And, um, and the beautiful thing of it is, I mean, she swam great on freestyle, but she's got some other great strokes. So it's, it's awesome to get that experience at this age because she's got a really bright future, and as, as they all do. Sure they, sure they do. Well, obviously you've had a stellar performance in Commonwealth 2022, Birmingham, England. Uh, reason to be very proud of all of your athletes. Uh, but certainly to them, certainly to others, you know, the Commonwealth Games is just another meet on the annual calendar. What's next uh, in uh, Team Cayman Swimmers' future? Um, we've always got a lot of competitions coming up. So we've got World Championships in December and another one in the summer. Um, we've got Crifter in April. But I mean, the great thing with swimming in Cayman at the moment is the depth. Like we had five swimmers there, but we've also got another four or five swimmers who are of really high standards. Swimming for Cayman's looking really, really bright. We've got some incredible swimmers coming through and not just for the Caribbean, on a world stage. So I think, you know, the future of Cayman swimming is, is exciting, really exciting. And it's, it's awesome to be involved in. Indeed. Uh, well, Darren, I want to congratulate you and your team uh, and your staff. Uh, for a stellar performance mm -hmm. at the 2022 Commonwealth Games. Uh, you certainly have every reason uh, to be very proud of yourself and your team. And uh, we look forward to following your successes uh, for the remainder of the year and, of course, into the future. We do happen to have a clip of uh, Sierra Broadbelt's uh, fantastic 50-meter freestyle win, yeah. which we're going to share with our listening audience. But we thank you very much for being our guest. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Grenadines, Gibraltar, Turks and Caicos, Tonga and Maldives with representatives in this. Fastest entry time for the 15-year-old Gibraltarian in lane number four. That is Asia Kent. Asia Kent's not had the best time, but the best time is up there in lane number two, Sierra Broadbelt. Go Sierra! Youngest competitor we've had so far. She's the youngest the competitor. From the Cayman Islands in lane number two. Go Sierra! Storming start on the far side, and she's going to win this. Nobody's going to catch the 13. Go! 
And welcome back to the second episode of recapping the 2022 Commonwealth Games, which were held in Birmingham, England. Our next guest in this episode focuses on gymnastics. It is our pleasure to welcome to this episode of Let's Talk Sports, gymnastics coach Kyle Perry and gymnastics athletes Igor Magliais. Welcome to Let's Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to have you both in studios uh, again. An opportunity to sort of you know, introduce yourselves to our audiences tuning in. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. Coach, we'll start with you. Your background, uh, where you hail from, <laughs> uh, and what brings you to coaching in the Cayman Islands? Um, well, I'm originally from the U.S. I'm from Georgia. Uh, competed gymnastics from the age of seven until probably 16, 17 years old. Um, and then just... You know, I joined the Marines whenever for four years, okay. got out of the military, and just wanted to go back to doing what I loved, and started coaching. Um, coached in the U.S. for about four years, and then I saw a job offer, honestly, on Facebook. Uh -huh. And they were like, hey, come coach in the Cayman Islands. Um, so I was like, hey, I can do that. Sure. So four years later, I'm here, went to Commonwealth Games, traveled all over the world with these guys, and... You know, couldn't be more happy. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we're certainly thrilled to have you. And uh, again, welcome to the program and welcome to Team Cayman. Uh, Igor, likewise, tell us a little bit uh, about yourself. Uh, again, I think you know, the, the key is to the name. You know, Igor, Igor makes you think of a different demographic, but you're actually from Brazil. Yeah. Talk to yeah. us about yourself, Igor. So I was born in Brazil and I moved to Cayman at a very young age. Um, went through preschool all the way to high school. Okay. Um, heading off to university in September. Um, and uh, yeah, I started doing gymnastics around the ages of five. So I've been in it for 14 so years. Wow. Um, again, we started going to a lot of competitions in the U.S. when we were younger, you know, just trying to get a little more exposure. And then more recently throughout the years with Kyle, we've been going to more international games. Okay including Junior Pan Ams, Island Games, and uh, recently the Commonwealth, which was our first senior competition. I see. Which um, was an amazing experience. And uh, and yeah, it's uh, it's been a journey so far. How old are you? I'm 19 right now. 19? Wow. Yeah. So, you know, fresh, young, and of course you got your entire career ahead of you. Yeah. But I think you've made some tremendous accomplishments, not least of which, of course, uh, the subject that we're going to talk about today, and that is your performance in the 2022 Commonwealth Games, but back to you, Kyle. Um, coaching, what what motivated you to get into coaching? Um, I'm assuming you were a gymnastic athlete prior to, so you're an athlete turned yeah. coach. Talk to us about that transition from athlete to coach. Um, honestly, like I, after I got out, served in the Marines for four years, um, in between my being an athlete and a coach, and. Uh, just got out of the military in the U.S. and just, I was like, you know what, I want to do something, I want to do something else, but I don't want to just work like a normal nine-to-five job. I right. want to do something that, you know, that, that I love. Um, so I started coaching. I started coaching at a local gym. Um, and yeah, it was just, I started getting a passion for it. I started really enjoying what I did. And, you know, my dad always told me, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Yes. And so, you know, I just kind of followed that. You know, my dad, uh, always told me don't chase the money chase happiness the money will always follow will come later and so yeah that's what i did that's what i've been doing for the past seven years your and dad's a wise man yeah. and certainly you even wiser uh for taking up his good advice um now when i look at gymnastics and forgive my ignorance i'm learning as we go here as, as our listening audience but when i think about gymnastics and the various disciplines uh, contained therein. The first thought comes to my mind is your strength and conditioning process, also your balance and whatnot, uh, in order to compete in the various disciplines. Talk to us a little bit about your routine, your strength and conditioning routines, uh, your nutrition. I mean, both of you are in phenomenal shape, uh, but when we certainly take a look at some of the videos and some of the events that you competed in, you'll understand why. But talk to us about uh, the, the fitness requirements and therefore the training requirements contained uh, as part of that uh, fitness plan. So you guys, uh, these guys train uh, before Commonwealth Games about 20 hours a week. Um, I think the two weeks before Commonwealth Games, we upped it a little bit. Um, but, you know, they train three hours at a minimum per day, uh, six days a week. Um, try to get them in for four hours um, whenever I can. Um, 
And then as well as like training inside of the gym, you know, they do physiotherapy outside of the gym. They go to, uh, they go to Kings with me to go work out. Um, for me and myself, like, you know, this pretty big guy. So I have to do a lot of spotting, a lot of hands on stuff. So whenever he's learning this flips, like I'm also like picking him up and helping him learn it. So for me, like I, it's just as important for me to be in shape as it is for him. Sure. Um, because whenever he's doing a big flip, I mean, he doesn't want somebody that, you know, you need somebody he can trust to, to catch him. Right. And, you know, he's a big guy, so. Yeah, indeed, indeed. <laughs> if I don't keep up with my training, then, you know, we're both going to crash into each other. Gotcha. Igor, likewise, uh, your training uh, regime, both on uh, and off uh, gymnastics, uh, what does it entail? Yeah. Uh, what's your nutrition plan like? Yeah, so, um, like Kyle said, we were doing... We were really upping our hours up to uh, Commonwealth Games. I guess, like, if you go back a couple months, we would do more um, more strength, more power-based conditioning. Uh, leading up a couple weeks, maybe one month before, it would be more routine-based um, workouts. Mm -hmm. So we would be just trying to build up the muscular endurance of the skills that we're going to be performing in the competition, just so that then... Here we do a session, we'll do three, three, to f three, four, five routines. There we only need to do one, you know? So if we're able to get through the third one and still have energy, you know, when we get there, it should be a breeze. Right. Um, and yeah, we were doing about, I think we were doing seven to eight training a week. Mm -hmm. So we would do morning practices on some days and an afternoon every day. Mm -hmm. um, Sundays, rest days. Um, and uh, nutrition would be, it would definitely be more strict going up to the games. Um, I, I didn't have a strict, like I knew kind of the path or mm -hmm. like what I should eat, what I shouldn't eat. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, I think one thing about like for us is like, you know, for, for me to, to do a training plan, right, for these guys is like, they have to peak, yes. right? We want them to peak. I want them to peak at the Commonwealth Games. I don't want them to peak a week before. I don't want to peak a week after. So, like, for me, it's, it was, you know, I have to get them to the Commonwealth Games. And what I do is I take the day that we start, you know, that competition, and I work back. And I say, okay, this week, you know, I get, we'll have a hard week where I'm like, you know, you got to do three routines on everything. And it's 18 routines that they have to do which is super strenuous, you know, yes. super difficult on them. Um, but if they can do 18 routines, then whenever they go to the Commonwealth Games and they only have to do one, they're going to be like, oh, thank God. Yes. You know, coach, I only have to do one. And at the Commonwealth Games, you know, we started the qualification um, at 7 a.m. We had to be at the gym. Um, and we do like a two-hour warm-up, and then it's a two-hour competition. So, right. you know, for four hours, you know, you, you're ex it's super demanding. Of sure it is. So if we don't prepare for that, and we don't, you know, make the training harder than the competition, then whenever they go to the competition, they're going to struggle. Absolutely. Indeed. I certainly understand that. Was this your first Commonwealth Games uh, to participate in New yes. York? Yeah, first time. All right. One of the events uh, that you participated in was the Parallel Bar, speaking of yeah. that strength and conditioning. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that event for you. Uh, how did you feel about your performance, uh, both going in and coming out of it? Yeah, no, Parallel Bar is... Uh, one of the events that I was happier on at the competition. Um, the qualifiers routine went fine. I um, may have got a little overconfident on the dismount, opened up a little early, and I stumbled back a little. Uh, but then going into the finals, when I did that routine again, it ended up being a lot better, and I almost stuck my dismount. Mm -hmm. um, P-bars was one of those that we, we were constantly adjusting. Uh, like what to put in, what to take out, you know, what, uh, what's a routine that I do confidently and then still have energy for the dismount. Yes. Um, and, you know, Kyle ended up helping me out a lot. We talked a lot and he, he, he gave me a really solid routine to perform. And, um, yeah, uh, definitely happier with my performance in the finals with this apparatus. Um, but I was pretty happy with the results. All right.
Now, the, the area of gymnastics, as I said, said before, consists of multiple disciplines. There's the parallel bars, uh, there's rings, which yeah. again, when I think of strength and conditioning, you know, it doesn't get any harder than you know, parallel bars or the rings in particular. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the other disciplines in gymnastics that you participate in? Yeah, so, so gymnastics is built up of six. Um, it's split in kind of three different categories. So there's uh, run slash legs, mm -hmm. support, and then hang. Mm -hmm. um, so starts off Olympic quarter, floor, pommel horse, rings, vault, P-bars, high bar. Okay. Um, at the competition, I started on pommel horse. The qualification was Qualifications, nice. pommel horse. Mm -hmm. And I think finals, I started on rings. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, you were spot on saying rings is probably known as, you know, the most dominant for strength. Yes. Strength moves, um, holding each, each element for two or three seconds. Right. Um, but then, you know, right after rings, we have like a short little break with vault. It's a short, powerful, uh, event. And then again, P bars, high bar takes a lot of, uh, stamina on those air practices too. And then floor. You know, ending on, I think, no, we started on floor. No, mm -hmm. no problem, we started on floor. I was pretty happy with that. Floor is also one that um, takes a lot out of you. Yeah. Because you're doing constant sprints, flips. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, each each has its unique set of uh, skills. The floor routine, they have like a, it's uh, 75 seconds okay. to complete the entire routine. So, like. Whenever, if you watch like a men's gymnastics routine, like on the floor, they're running, they're sprinting, they're, you know, they're doing everything. They have, they only have 75 seconds. If they do over 75, then they get points taken off. Okay. So that adds to the difficulty of the event. They can't stand in the corner and breathe and catch their breath for way too long because sure. if they do, then, you know, so I feel like at this level, gymnastics is a chess game. Yeah. Like what he was talking about, like, you know, for me as, as his coach, like if there's like the parallel bars, like. He was saying like we added things and we took things out and like that's what we we constantly do that. Um, and my job is like, what can I do to put you in the best place? You know, maybe we add we we take a little bit of difficulty out, but then we can we'll score higher because now you have a lot more energy for the end of the routine. So um, so yeah, like even like leading up to the Commonwealth Games, like they were doing all those routines and you know sometimes I'd be like, hey, we're not going to do this now. Right. You know and. Then, you know, for these guys, you know, hey, you know, we sit down, we talk about why we're not going to do it. And then we are like, okay, we're going to do this instead. Or we're going to add this because now you have more energy on this part. So it's just a whole like. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, I understand. Big old puzzle piece. Sure it is. Do you have a favorite uh, event in gymnastics? Is it, you know, yeah. uh, which one is your favorite? So it, for me, it's always changing. I would uh -huh. say top, top two for Commonwealth was high bar and floor. Okay, really? Yeah. All right. And in, in terms of your performance, I mean, obviously, you, you come from a small island, uh, mm -hmm. even smaller population. You're competing in Birmingham, England, uh, you know, millions of people, maybe thousands of people yeah. in the auditorium at that time. What was that experience like, um, certainly in terms of performing before such a large crowd? And individually, yeah. were you pleased with the performances uh, that you did, in fact, put it? Yeah, yeah. So the experience was exhilarating. Like, first time being in a stadium that was that packed. Um, from from previous experience, I kind of knew or, or knew what I was going to expect. Uh, Junior Pan Ams in Colombia, that one was also in a pretty big stadium. Um, but I think because of COVID uh, restrictions, it wasn't fully fully uh, sold out. Um, Commonwealth was though, so like every every little uh, skill you did, you know, the crowd would be crazy, and it it, it honestly energizes you. It it, it um, fills you with adrenaline too. I was happy. I'm I'm happy with my performance. I think that I went did exactly what I practiced. Um, for qualifiers, I don't think I had any falls, so I hit 
I hit my routines. I was super pleased with that. Um, you know, I, honestly, this was probably one of the comp- this was the competition that I was most confident going into, um, just because of how we prepared for it yeah. compared to how we prepared to other for other competitions. Um, you know, going into finals, I was um, that was also like an experience. That was a uh, kind of a different atmosphere from qualifiers. Um, I feel like the nerves got a little better than me in one or two events, but then afterwards, warming up into the crowd and warming up again on um, that separate day, it uh, it ended up going well. It went how I wanted it to, mm-hmm. and um, I'm super super happy with my performance. The thing about the, the, the finals that was so crazy for me is like, the next smallest country besides us was New Zealand. Okay. So, you know, like, yeah. you know, we're in this big stadium, right? And, uh, yeah, it was crazy for me, like, as his coach, like, watching him and, like, the the, crowd, the like, cheers that he was getting mm-hmm. were, like, the same as, like, England. Oh, fantastic. Like, oh, be- because, you know, we're, we're, we're smallest country, like, you know, it's 20,000 people and he's doing a routine and, like, everybody's, like, doing the routine with him and, like, yes. you know, it was... It was crazy. It was crazy for, for me to like to witness that, to like see that, you know, people were cheering for like little guys. Yeah. You know, like we we're by far the littlest country there, smallest sure. country there, and like everybody was like the support that he had in finals was pretty awesome. Oh that's that's uh, oh, that's very uplifting. Um considering that, you know, somewhere in our audience today there might be a young gymnast, mm-hmm. you know, interested in being Igor, being the next Igor once you know, to do rings, wants to do parallel bars, wants to do yeah. the floor work. Um, you know, you're just 19 years old, so your career is really just beginning. But what would you say if you could, you know, narrow it down to one important lesson that you've learned in your journey so far? Uh, what would it be? Yeah. Um, I think it would be one that I recently have been telling myself or kind of learn coming out of Commonwealth would be um, don't try to compare yourself to the other athletes you see on social media. Mm-hmm. It's pretty difficult now with um, like the attention everyone's getting on social media, but kind of focus on yourself and set smart goals to which are specific to you. And um, just by doing that, you end up... Um, I don't know, I feel like you end up just being a better athlete and, uh, you know, sometimes you overthink things and you get ahead of yourself and then that can, like, cause too much pressure and then you get to the gym and, I don't know, you might have an off day and you just, you know, get upset, you're falling too much, but mm-hmm. if, you, if you just kind of focus on yourself, stop overthinking about everybody else and, you know, s- set your goals and as long as you stay on track to achieve what you want to achieve, then you end up uh, improving at a lot quicker rate and you end up, you know, enjoying the sport a lot more all right i think it's, i think it's sound advice we were chatting about you know how you got into gymnastics uh igor i think you mentioned uh you know you've been doing gymnastics from the time you could walk you know for the a parent who perhaps may be listening perhaps their young son or daughter has an interest in gymnastics um, how do they begin what is the usual starting age um uh, what would you tell them coach um we uh we train at uh, Motions Unlimited Gymnastics, um, and you know we, we run classes from 18 months old. Wow. Um, I have little babies that are just just starting to walk. Um, I set up little obstacle courses for them on the floor, uh, all the way up to to his age, to 19. Wow. So you know, just say the earlier the better. You know, just get them in, get them get them started. They like climbing, running, jumping. You know, they got a lot of energy. Come bring them to us, and we'll take their energy out, and then. Who knows, you know? You <laughs> send them back to you yeah, when you're tired. Yeah, yeah. They'll sleep at time, night. Yeah. Well, it's funny. My uh, my director here has uh, young kids, so maybe you might have <laughs> at least two new sign-ups, possibly at the end of today's episode. Uh, so, Coach, what's next? I mean, we've got the experience of the Commonwealth Games behind you. Uh, certainly from you know your athlete's perspective, it was uh, a very fulfilling experience. Uh, it was a learning opportunity. Um, and certainly he's still... Uh, stoked uh, to be a gymnast. What's next for uh, uh, for you, coach, and your team? 
Um, so we have a another athlete who who uh, competed with him. Uh, seems Karthik. Uh, mm-hmm. He's staying on island. Igor's going to college uh, this year, so, uh, so I'll stay on island with Karthik. I have two other uh, athletes as well on the team, Justin and Alex. So uh, prepare to two younger guys for um, for island games. Mm-hmm. Um, Karthik, um, we're looking at. Uh, there's a competition in Guatemala um, in November. And then we're next year. We're looking at um, Pan American Games, okay. Island Games, World Championships. Um, so next year is going to be a big, big year for us. Um, and so yeah, so just preparing for for next year, just getting getting ready for for more. All right. Well, let's hope we don't fingers crossed we don't have any more pandemics or other you know world stopping events to get in the <laughs> way. Uh, but I want to thank you both uh, for being our guest. I want to again congratulate you both and the rest of your team on what has been certainly phenomenal performances uh, from Team Cayman and yourselves individually. Um, you know, uh, you, Igor, 19 years old, your entire career is still in front of you. I want to encourage you to, you know, stick to it. Uh, you got the academics portion, which you got to, you know, marry with the athletic side, but you seem capable uh, to do that. I want to congratulate you again. Thank you for being our guest. I want to give you an opportunity for some closing remarks. Igor, will begin with you, and Coach, will let you have the final say. Yeah, no. Uh, so first, I want to thank you for having us. Thanks for inviting. Um, and uh, yeah, no. I hope to be back some sometime. You know, share more experiences. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, thanks for having us. No, real pleasure. Real pleasure. You'll definitely be back. We look forward to hearing more about you and following your career as you grow. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Coach. Uh, yeah. So first, thanks for having us. Um, yeah. Without without the support of the community and stuff, you know, we wouldn't. You know, wouldn't be where we are. Um, you know, we have the Cayman Islands Gymnastics Association, uh, Cayman Islands Olympic Committee, everybody who put so much into us um, and so much, you know, couldn't thank them enough um, for for believing in us and allowing us to go after these goals and these dreams that we have. Indeed. Well, again, thank you both and congratulations on a fantastic uh, performance and fantastic showing. Was there something you wanted to add? Yeah, I, I want to just add on with Kyle, uh, thanking the CIOC and um, the Cayman Islands Gymnastics Association with the incredible support they've given us through training camps, funding, you know, helping us achieve what we've been able to achieve. And uh, yeah, a huge shout out to them. All right, indeed. Well, they're all listening <laughs> and they're all tuned in, so I'm sure they will. Uh, on their behalf, I say we appreciate it. Thank you very much for your kind Thank comments. You. Uh, and certainly to our listening audience, we too thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed uh, today's episode as much as we did. Uh, certainly we are all proud of our Team Cayman athletes who competed in the 2022 Commonwealth Games, which was held in Birmingham, England. Um, if you did uh, like today's episode, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And feel free to leave any comments uh, along with watching perhaps you want to comment uh, to either of the athletes or our guests feel free to do so there remember to tune in to another episode of let's talk exploring the issues affecting all of our lives uh, we air every tuesday and thursday at 4 p.m until then i'm your host austin harris